Another Realm is a real play Dungeons and Dragons podcast wherein I, Tanner, and Will try to make dumb jokes and a compelling story. Some of the content within will not be for children, but if that doesn't bother you, then here's what happened on the last episode of Another Realm. There is there is something making its way here. And the, the purple lights on the walls get brighter and brighter until the glass around them breaks. And as the three of you look out in that direction, you can see this smoke. Everything that's in it doesn't seem to be obscured by the smoke, but just seems to not exist. Well, this should be interesting. Professor Argo Malcott is also caught, and this thing crashes into him. Instantly, Archie, you have no recollection of Professor Argo Malcott or Six. I'm not a hero. I shouldn't have played a hero, and I should have left the fucking cleric to die in his workshop. This thing rushes into you, and then it's nothing. Interlopers in the drift, you should not be here yet. Argo shouts a spell. I'll hold him back as long as I can. Find Cantelli. Spent my whole life running from you. If you're going to get me, you're going to get me. And he turns and he just starts walking away. This building is before you that really wasn't there before. My name is Navar. I look for Archibald Theodore Cromwell. Archie takes the picture off the wall and he stares at it. Never taken a painting off. The two of you find yourselves in the gallery of a courtroom. And you are about to be convicted of murder. You find yourselves in the gallery of a courtroom in Port Waitworth. Archie, everything is exactly how you remember it, even from this point of view. There are many people gathered to watch the trial, but less than a handful are friendly faces. You've wronged a lot of these folks, but you'd rather have gone down for those crimes instead of this. You see yourself handcuffed to a podium facing Judge Gliam Svelik, a high mage from Casterhaven appointed by the Crown to oversee justice in Port Waitworth. His white dreadlocks are pulled back into a small ponytail, and his piercing blue eyes look down his nose at the past version of you. You remember the pain you felt and the bile rising in your stomach when you learned that your crew, the family you built, were savagely murdered. Even worse, you only found out about it as you were being arrested for the crime. You then feel all that pain turn into burning anger when you hear the voice of Aeneas Oliver Hadley, the man you once called brother. There's no punishment too hard for this man. Because of his uncontrollable rage, three sons and five daughters will grow up without the protection of a father. Four wives will need to work their fingers to the bone to provide for their families, and I will have to live on with the burden of thinking that maybe I could have prevented it by turning in this monster sooner. I'm sorry for all the things I've done, but I am most sorry for that. Oh, rough. <laughs> Uh, Archie, what's going through your mind as you look down at your own trial? (laughs) Uh, I don't know if there is anything going through his mind. (laughs) Just instant rage? Yeah, well, no, it's not instant rage. It's more like a cold, sweaty feeling of, like, pure fear running down your spine. Six is kind of looking between Archie and the scene, and then Archie, and then Archie, and then Archie, and then Archie again, just trying to see. And then he looks at Anus Hadley, and Anus. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Let's let's not make this. Such There's a, a reason everybody always called him Anus. <laughs> wow, let's just go into levity. All right, great, thanks, guys. No, 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 cut that shit. I just thought it would be funny. No, um, stay uh, <laughs> that's what that's what Will actually said was Anus. Is Ane- uh, Aeneas. Aeneas Oliver Hadley, Aeneas. correct? Yes. Um, 
Yeah, like as you're looking between uh, past Archie and present Archie, um, you also catch a glimpse of Navarre, the child, who is also here in this scene. And he's just looking on, uh, conf- not confused, but like very interested in the whole situation. Uh, also, the only clear indicator of, of how Archie feels right now is tightly clenched hands that are basically like white. They've been they're clenching. So, yeah. White knuckling. OK. All right. So, yeah, you guys are uh, looking over this court scene. Are there are there any other faces or anyone uh, like in the painting? Um, Aeneas was was clearly painted in this sort of outline that kind of defined him as the the villain in this this particular scene. You do have the judge there, which just to kind of describe court cases in this magical realm, they don't work like uh, our type of court cases. You don't have really prosecutors or or people that are trying to defend um, people conv- or, uh, accused of a crime um, because we have magic. They just use spells to get people to tell the truth. But you really just have defendants to make sure people have a fair trial. Now, in this particular case, Archie, you were not allowed to present your side. They had witnesses brought in and spells were cast and they told their story. But the story is wrong that they told. You don't know how they got around the spells or what was done. But you do know that there's a fair amount of injustice in the justice system in Port Wayworth. And a lot of these people wanted your head on a pike anyway. So, um, I I would imagine there's probably like other gang members, members of the guard, like people like that, that are, I've ran into again and had, had squabbles with, they're probably not present, but I don't really, there's no one of, of, of really note because, Everyone that was of note to Archie is now lying in a ditch somewhere, probably, except this fucker in front of me. Yeah, you're fixated. Um, yeah, I mean, dotted about uh, uh, six, you could see people of all types. There's a lot of different folks in here, a few of them um, with these wicked grins on their faces, a few of them visibly distraught, obviously the family of of uh, Archie's crew members. The judge seems to hold a special amount of disdain for you, Archie. And after his Aeneas, you know, gave his little piece, his personal testimony, does past you say anything or do anything? Or yeah, pa- just past Archie is going to burst out and say, I never killed nobody. I didn't deserve killing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I sure as hell ain't kill me, bruvs. All right. Judge Svelik continues to to look at you with the... with with disdain his his eyes are fixated on you as you you have this outburst and also archie up on the up on the in the gallery goes that was real stupid of me to say i agree your sentence might have been lessened had you not spoken up there no highly doubtful they were out to get me from the start that sentiment is echoed when the judge speaks I have looked at the case. I believe that the maximum sentence is well-deserved. And I believe you should suffer for more than you have been accused of here. Your past crimes have been brought to my desk so many times. So many, in fact, that the crown knows of your transgressions. If that were not so disturbing, it would be impressive. But, alas, we only have the darkest pits to throw you into. Because I think you should suffer for this. Death is too easy an escape. This hardly seems fair. I say that a little too loud. (laughs) Uh, A few people in the crowd turn to you. So at this point, you, you can see that they... Oh, they actually people know us? know that they you're can here. see us? Oh, yep. God, they can actually see us? <laughs> yep, people can hear oh, you. Hey, look, it's a spitting image of the person on trial. Uh, you know, they they don't seem to register that. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Were you still yeah. wearing the suit back then? No, he's probably in rags right now. Oh, okay, so they, they you look like a dapper boy. Maybe you're, maybe you're his dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah your, uh, your past self is dressed in, you know, basically prisoner garb that they would have thrown in you rags just to keep you covered um, when you came into the courtroom. 
Gotcha. So the the, contri- uh, the trial will continue on. If you guys, uh, you can you could stay to watch it, or you can you could do something. Well, no, I well, I was going to say Archie's going to have another outburst when he says that about the crown. I ain't never done nothing but save the people the crown left in the pits. So don't you blame me or patronize me that the crown knows who I am. The crown does not share your concerns. Uh, so he's said he's, you said he's tied to a pillar. You're you're basically behind a um uh a podium. You know, it, it kind of goes around you in a in a U shape. Or behind past you. Okay, I didn't know what situ like what his physical situation was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at this point, uh, anybody watching the scene would see the younger Archie assume the same kind of cold, vengeful anger that he has presented already uh, since you met the older Archie, and he's going to say through gritted teeth, "One of these days, I'll be free." And when I am, you're both going to pay. And it's going to be the most excruciating feeling you've ever felt in your life. And it's going to be slow. Um, as you say this, you can look over to Aeneas and through his sort of performance, the, the, the welling of the tears in his eyes and the, the regret on his face, you can see a slight smirk. And the judge basically waves your comment off. As two bailiffs start to approach on either side. Then I suppose we will continue with sentencing. The maximum sentence is eternity. I mean, if you were immortal, that wouldn't matter. So life, the rest of it, with no chance of escape, you'll be put to work every day. And you'll be given the bare means to survive. And that is more than you deserve. The only thing I'll need to get the two of you is my rage. I would caution you for threatening a judge during sentencing, but it no longer matters. Bailiffs, take him away. (laughs) Archie just smiles like a bleedingly evil smile through clenched teeth as he's grabbed by the bailiffs. All he says is in a very monotone voice i will haunt the both of you to the ends of the earth and they take you away uh, out of the scene your vision blurs uh you and six the present versions uh this sort of wave effect begins to happen and then you find yourselves in the gallery of a courtroom in port wayworth Archie, everything is exactly how you remember it, even from this different point of view. There are many people gathered to watch the trial, but less than a handful are friendly faces. You've wronged a lot of these folks, but you'd rather have gone down for those crimes instead of this. Uh, yeah, older adult, older, older Archie is going to turn to six and he's going to say, Well, I've seen enough of this. We both know how this story ends. Let's figure out a way to get out of here. I was going to ask if you were having a sense of, what is it called? Deja vu? Doja? Cat? No, de- deja vu. Deja vu. Thank you. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I wonder, uh, is Navar there? Navar's still here, yeah. I look at, I guess I look to Navar and say, mm, how do we get back I don't know I've never gone into a painting before I haven't tried to remove him from the walls he's got a fair point that's fair I guess we could try something new I stand up and cast guiding bolt at the judge <laughs> okay roll the hit <laughs> oh, does it just hit yeah do that do that <laughs> this is this is probably a terrible idea I'm going to assume probably that any any deterrent from the memory will cause it to reset, but we'll see. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that's kind of what happens just to see. <laughs> Archie begins bleeding out of his head. I rolled a 19. Okay. Uh, you send out this guiding bolt. You uh, mutter the words for it and do the... I, I don't know if it's verbal, but... Um, yeah, it is verbal. Verbal and semantic. Okay. 
Yeah, as you as you mutter the words for it, uh, the people around you turn and you can see some uh, like arcane symbols trigger around you, uh, most likely preventative magic runes. Um, but you send this out and uh, it so it goes straight to the judge and smacks him right in the chest. And as you cast this underneath you. <laughs> This green energy comes up and restrains you and you cannot move. But when when the guiding bolt hits the judge, uh, go ahead and roll damage for me, please. Oh, my God. I hit the shit out of him. I did. Uh, uh, oh, it's not plus anything. 18 damage. <laughs> OK, uh, as you hit him, um, red um, paint starts to come out and spray like streak across the scene and stay as if it's this kind of staccato sort of uh, chiseled on paint. And then this, this seems like fracturing of reality reverberates uh, in this tear off of the judge and comes out. And once again, all these waves come in your perception, even as you're frozen there. And then uh, your vision returns and you find yourself in the gallery of a courtroom in Fort Wayworth. <laughs> All right, I've done a lot of drugs in my life, and that <laughs> that has never happened. So don't do that again, please, Six. It was kind of trippy. What you do notice in this particular iteration, however, is that the judge has streaks of red paint across his chest. You know, you might be giving me a lobotomy here. I... <laughs> I am sorry for that. <laughs> that uh, wasn't... I thought maybe we would break the loop. Archie begins feeling feeling his face, making sure he's not bleeding. Yeah, Archie looks nose. fine. You look fine. Don't worry. I'm going to look around for doors. Yeah, there, there are the number of doors that you remember there being in here. Um, there's the main double doors that come in at the back of the room that you can enter from. And then there's... Um, a door on the – if you're facing the judge on the left side that likely goes to his chambers and then another one on the right where they take you out at the end of the scene. And you know from experience that it just takes you back into like the temporary holding cells that they would then take you to jail. Should we try something new? Maybe you give it a go. Archie looks around. I like how Bruce is actually looking around. <laughs> get that's into character. The character, man. That's getting into the, that's that's commitment right there. Uh, as you're as you're looking around, you hear Aeneas once again say, "There's no punishment too harsh for this man." Hey, six. Because of his uncontrollable rage. Stay here for a moment. Something. I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Archie gets up. And he just fucking sprints at Aeneas and hits him with his great axe. All right. Uh, I need you to go ahead and roll athletics for me. Okay. I'm good at that. And, and, and for, my, for, the, for the listeners, he knows full well this is not going to do anything. But it'll feel good. Athletics, 17. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, you are sprinting forward towards Aeneas. And... It it takes um, it doesn't take you long to get pretty close to where he's giving his statement. However, by the time just right before you get there, past you looks over and sees present you, and you feel this pounding, splitting headache come on that starts at your temples and moves behind your eyes. I need you to go ahead and roll a Constitution saving throw for me. Hey, I'm also good at that too. A 17. Oh, a 17. Very nice. Okay. Uh, as you as you feel this headache, uh, the, the rage that's building up inside of you, you're able to, to push it back and ignore the pain. And you vault over uh, and dive with your great axe towards Aeneas and shunk, uh, you stick this directly. Where do you where do you slice him? Right how in do his you, neck. How you, Right in his neck. Okay. I just bury uh, it like straight down in, in, in between his neck and his shoulder. Uh, your great axe, which is um, embellished with the uh, the wolf that is representative of the of the company of uh, of men that you used to lead, uh, slams down into the side of Aeneas's neck with a thick thunk. 
um, and you can feel it and all this hatred that you've held up for so long uh, in your swing, your muscles straining to try and force this thing through him. And as you do, you can see red paint come outwards and white paint as it cuts through bone and presses forward and moves out into the room and begins to cover the scenery. And then once again, your vision begins to turn into waves as things fade out and back in. And once again, you find yourself at the beginning of the scene. But if you look over at Aeneas, you can see these white and red markings, this sort of crimson scarf that traces across in front of him where you wounded him. All right. That was fucking worth it. Let's get out of here. I just, he just, Archie stands up and goes towards the double doors. Navarre says, you think we could just, I mean, it's worth a shot. That's a better idea than these two. It doesn't seem that we've accomplished much besides making it a little bit more hmm, colorful. Excuse me. What I did was very cathartic. It's a good word. I did something. I know, right? I almost said lethargic. <laughs> Very lethargic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Um, so the, the three of you head to the, the double doors? Yeah. Okay. You go towards the double doors, and people do turn to see you, but only regard <laughs> you. No, I'm kidding. I don't do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> he just flips off. <laughs> uh, they only regard you in so much as you're someone who's leaving a trial before the sentence is passed. And they're like, the fuck? This is a bad dude. You don't want to see this happen? And as you swing open the doors in the back, what you look out to is all these swirling paint colors. This sort of impressionistic uh, mix of oil paintings moving and undulating in front of you. What are uh, all those like clocks waves. doing here? Ha <laughs> ha! Is that an Alice in Wonderland reference? No, it's the painting. Is a Dolly reference? Anybody hear a bomb ticking? Must be, must be, must be six is hot. Tick tock, tick tock on the clock. Damn, I wasn't trying to do a nursery rhyme. So yeah, that's what you see in front of you. One small step for me. Hey six, I'm gonna share a bit, little bit of um, advice for you. Yeah. Don't do drugs. Understood. I dive in. <laughs> Okay, bye. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it is just six that dives into the paint. Uh, Navar looks up at you, Archie, and he takes a, a little step back. At six, as you dive into this paint, like you can feel this sort of... You ever you ever finger painted? you remember finger painting? Yeah, it's real oily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the it's that all not... over you. Oh, you're asking Will. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm asking Will. Remember Will, finger painting. <laughs> Will, you fancy? Yeah, I what didn't say fingers? six. You remember? I'm just kidding. <laughs> six is um, finger painted with people's organs. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh, I don't gross. know. I don't know. That's a joke. Joke. Not yet. Not gross, yet. Gross, 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 um, gross. Yeah. It's it, it. I mean, it's like you submerged your whole body in in oil paints. It's uh, it's goopy. You're swimming forward. Um, it seems fine to try and move through. You don't need to breathe, so you don't know if that's an issue. Hmm. Well, I figured it was better for me to try than anyone else, as I do not need to breathe. Um, Glad you can take I, one for the same sex. Am I floating? There's no way. I'm I know you've you've you're completely submerged in this. So, so it's more like you would not have heard that. Well, <laughs> I, I, the, the viscosity <laughs> of paint. No, <laughs> oh, it's more like. <laughs> okay, all right, we're done with that. No, That's but that, that sound joke. effect was pretty good. Like, if I was not if I was not watching you, I would definitely think you were like <laughs> stuck your head underwater or something. That uh, just for the listeners, that was n all with me. That was no effects. That was all his mouth. All right, I, I guess I'm gonna climb back out if there's nothing happening. <laughs> uh yeah. You you start to swim back towards the the vertical surface that is the door. And um, as he comes out, Archie, Six is covered in, in multicolored stripes and, and splotches of paint. It looks like this paint isn't mixing together. It's just all these colorful streaks all over him as he steps out. I guess you're going through your uh, rebellious phase, eh? Mm, painter I, joke. I, I look down. Oh, I guess so. Uh, this did nothing. Oh, I got I got one more thing to try. Uh, All right, you go ahead. I'll wait here. Hold on. 
can we like if I do I feel get the feeling that if I continued going out into the paint that I would escape somehow? Um, what's what's out there? Is it just blackness? I mean, it's it's paint. You know, like you could still kind of see colors because you can have your eyes open and not be full of paint. But like you're just looking into paint. <laughs> OK. All right. Here's what I want to try. Here's what, if, you, if, trying, you want, if you're trying to, to try and roll to see if you know if something's out there, I will let you do like this is clearly magical. So if you want to roll Arcana. OK, sure. I'll try that first before I do what I'm about to do. <laughs> oh, that's a two on dice. And it's like plus two or five or something. What is Arcana? You think that if you jumped into this, any plus number two. of possibilities could happen. You could swim out of the painting or you could end up uh, turning into a cuckoo clock. You don't know. <laughs> I got to check one of the other doors. All right. Archie, you walk towards one of the other doors, and as you do, past you, sees you walk by, and you once again get that splitting headache. I need you to go ahead and roll a um, constitution save. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. All right. This time around, the headache begins to overcome you. Your rage isn't fueling you, and your momentum bring you forward, an object of your... Uh, not desire, but your need to, to do a, a, an action um, isn't keeping you from, from succumbing to this headache. And you fall to your knees as this splits through your brain. And once again, everything begins to wave and reset itself. And we're back at the beginning of the scene. I really fuck. That wasn't fun. The, the headache certainly does dissipate. New rule, Six. Don't let me see me. <laughs> oh, understood. That's probably a good rule. There's something uh, in there, some sort of logical fallacy there anyway. Okay. Anyways, um, let me try this. I'm going to cast command. It, it does have a verbal component, but I'm going to cast command on anus. <laughs> it's going to automatically fail unless you say uh, his name uh, properly. Uh, Aeneas, Aeneas, Aeneas. All right, fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> get, get wrecked. <laughs> hey, it's you've got you've got to have powers. a target of a magical spell, and no one here is named Anus. Okay, true. A- Aeneas Oliver Hadley. I'm gonna Thank cast you. command on Aeneas Oliver Hadley. I get a one word okay. command if he fails my DC 13 saving throw. So, so a few save. notes before you do that. A few notes. You guys are all seated back in the same positions in the gallery again. You're not standing in different Ooh. places. Um, however. Six is still covered in paint. That's I should have asked that first, actually. That's a good is, point. Is, is Aeneas and the Judge also still covered in paint? Yeah, their paint, you can still see the, the swaths of paint um, from when you entered them. Uh, just, the, just the streaks of red on the Judge and the streaks of uh, red and bone white on Aeneas. Duly noted. Uh, I, now I do the command thing. Okay. Go ahead and tell me what that command is. Oh, he fails? Huh? I well no. Tell me what the command oh, is. Truth is the one word I say. The one word command is truth. What's your save? Thirteen. Wisdom. This is verbal, correct? It is verbal. Okay. Um, any other components to it? To it? Verbal, Mm-mm. semantic, material? Just verbal. Just verbal. Okay. So you let forth one word. Truth. Okay. Um. As as this comes out, have you used the command spell before? Nope. Okay. Basically, you can kind of see these sort of sort of uh, audio shock waves moving slowly towards Aeneas, and boy, that's nifty. It blows over him. No one else seems to notice the spell, um, but in this sort of thing, you can kind of see flickers of of colors of paint as it moves through. As as instant as the spell comes out, the light once again comes up around you and you are frozen in place and locked down. But then Aeneas's expression begins to change. His his features soften a bit, his expression not so fake. And he trembles as as if he's trying to hold back 
uh, something that's building up inside of him. And then he says, what, what is the, what is the truth, Archie? What is the truth of this scenario? Did he kill all of them or did he conspire and have other people do it? Yeah. It's like a bit, it's a conspiracy more or less. Okay. Cause, cause there's no way he'd be able to, I mean, that. Yeah, it was a pretty decent sized crew. Like, I mean, one person couldn't have done it, but it could have been like a, he poisoned all of them at a, at a something or other. And the just... biggest thing is like Archie didn't do it is the biggest thing that I would expect him because he's about to say he's about to say the same thing he said every time, which is this man. I yeah, he did all this. Blah, blah, blah. So I, I do want to point out one thing that um, this is kind of a different use of of the command spell because there is the zone of truth. But yeah. uh, I'm for it. Um, oh, it's definitely not conventional. Typically, it's like an action that they make. But I figured maybe why not? Yeah, yeah. But if you read the uh, description, it can be in, it can be other things besides it, it, what. Yeah, it, I'm fine. I'm totally fine with it. It's no, just I'm, says I'm letting, I'm letting save it happen. or follow a one word command that makes sense to them. To me, this makes sense. In this, Let's in this go. case, certainly. So Aeneas says, struggling to hold these wor- words in, like he's trying to hold back. Uh, from vomiting and he says I I I I orchestrated the whole fucking thing and the people in the courtroom look both shocked but some of them look completely appalled you can pick out the ones uh, Archie the, the other gang members and leaders, you can look at their faces and see that this is not what they were expecting, especially since Aeneas then begins to start pointing people out and accusing them of being a part of it. And I didn't do it alone. I Everyone from the top gangs in the area helped me. And none of this, none of this is on him. And he points down to you. He passed you behind the pulpit uh pulpit behind the podium (laughs) the judge in this case looks shocked and you can see from the injuries that you've made to both the judge and to Aeneas all these other colors pouring forth and their eyes wash to this stark white before tears of paint begin pouring out and it begins filling the room and everything quickly from the doors that you had opened before, all the paint begins to fill in and this multicolored tapestry fills everything of your vision. This time, there is no waves that bring you back out, but your vision clears and you can see that you are back in the gallery, the actual gallery in Drift Realm with the painting that you were just in on the floor drained of all color except for tiny patches of multicolors on you in the center of the painting. No longer do you see the aura surrounding Aeneas Hadley but just a speck of what it feels like to have had someone tell the truth about your scenario no matter if it was real or not. But you're back in the gallery. Hello, dear listener. It's me again. I'm Will, a.k.a. The Voice of Six, and I want to thank you so much for listening to our sixth episode of our very first campaign, The Never There. If you want to find out more about the world of Yaset and the continent of Lear, you can find a bunch of nerdy world-building info on our website, netherrealm.com. That's N-O-T-H-E-R realm.com. Our next episode will release on Monday, October the 10th. Be sure to check it out and share this with your friends if you're enjoying it. And now for a message from Ranji. It's me, Speed, and I'm here to tell you that you need to... Ah! 
stupid speed? First you take my business, saying you're gonna take a one deck instead of two deck? And now you try and take my midpoint credit scene? What an asshole. Hi, it's me, Randy, and I'm here to tell you to leave us, um, give us a thing where you... <sighs> you're like, look at the... A review! Give Shh. us a review! Shut up! But yeah, give us a review. Make it positive. I mean, it doesn't have to. You can be honest. We like feedback. And if you, if you want to give feedback, leave a comment. Do the stars and the comment. Very easy process. Maybe some duck. I like duck. They're not going to put... Podcast is free, dummy. Well, that was a fucking wild ride. Oh, absolutely. Question. Do you still remember going to jail? Yeah, I'll never forget that hellhole. Ah, so we didn't change the past. It was kind of interesting, though. Like I said, done a lot of drugs. Never seen nothing like that before. We've got to talk about these drugs things. No, Should I do we don't drugs? Do, no, don't do drugs. Terrible idea. I don't idea. know if they would work on me anyways. Probably not. Well, you got some organic pieces, don't you? Oh, you're right. Do you think all kids should do drugs? I'm only four. Oh, absolutely not. You're way too young to do drugs. You gotta be at least seven. <laughs> <laughs> Navar perks up and says, I'm ten. Eleven, you, I said You can do 11. drugs. <laughs> oh, eleven. Fairly certain yeah. you said seven at first. Let's Not you misheard drugs. me, all these weird paint things going on. <laughs> okay, this is another <laughs> drug. <laughs> now, I do have quite a few more faces and Eds I'll be taking. So that's good uh, to know. Yeah, if you're, if you're wanting, you can remember specifics on this. Um, and we can kind of, there were three other people that Aeneas had pointed out. Okay, cool. Yeah. I agree with you, Archie. Glyam and Aeneas seemed like they were in cahoots, if you ask me. That was a setup. And bullshit. I, I wouldn't be half surprised if the entire crown was a part of that setup. Fucking bastards. You're right. Fuck them. <laughs> I said my first no, curse. Four, four, four year olds, you really shouldn't talk like that. I've. I'm fairly certain I'm much older than that, but I don't know much about my past. You think we could... I, I've i got an idea. I pull out the book again and, and pull up uh, uh, the doctor boy that we saw pictures of me in. Oh, uh, Argo Malcott? Yeah. You flip through to, to look for Argo Malcott and you see his name there. I think it was in silver. Um, and as you, you know... Fixate on that name, the halls of the gallery begin to shift and all of the paintings on the wall, uh, on the walls change and, and show the lifespan of, of Argo Malcott. Oddly enough, there are more paintings at the end of this than you might expect. You can see the sort of really messed up paintings that you saw when you looked at your own timeline and uh, right at the end before you were taken here, um, how it was just this these scratches of paintings, this chaotic sort of mess. But in Argo's case, there is there are well, there is one more painting afterwards. And he is in Drift Realm. You can see walking across the waves. But off in the distance, he's walking towards this gray tower. And so the gunslinger goes towards the I was I almost said the black tower. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry. Had to make a Stephen King reference there. Yeah, um, I figured. I figured. I look at Navarre and where is that? We're, it's in this realm. Did you guys say fuck in front of Navarre? Yes. Lots. Fuck if I know. <laughs> Hey, uh, remember I said, you know, you gotta be 11 to do drugs. You gotta be 11 to use words like that, too. Oh, 
What can I use instead? Well, I guess you could say, I don't know, fragging. Fragging if I... Is that not a, that's not a curse word? No. All right, fragging if I know. I guess technically it would be frag. It'd be frag if I know, not fragging. I don't know. Me either. <laughs> well, I would like to... Oh, actually, how did we get here? I'm pretty sure... We walked into that door over there. Yeah, but I'm I'm fairly certain that I just kind of willed it into existence. I was looking for a way out. Well, why didn't you say you could do that before, Six? We could have avoided mm. this whole problem. That's true. But there's one more thing I want to do, and I'm going to go find a picture of what I presume is me and the doctor doing some stuff uh, in a crowd. In a crowd. Okay. Um... Roll. Is there anything where they're together with a crowd of people? And other robotic entities that... No, I'm just kidding. Roll investigation for me. There's, I'm going to say there's a lot of paintings. I think that's just a 13. I got 13 on dice. I'm pretty sure I got a zero. Yep, 13. Okay. Um, as you're looking through, you don't see anything that meets those exact uh, standards. I mean, you do find a couple of um, the person you assume to be you, uh, the the tall, wiry, mustachioed man. Um, the closest thing you can find is what looks to be the two of you in a in a laboratory setting with a few more people around. I'll tell you what. I find a painting with just us two in it. Okay, you could certainly find that. Okay. Just follow my lead here. I pull it off the wall. Okay. Uh, as you pull it off the wall, you feel the same sort of tearing fabric of reality. And you are, uh, when your vision sort of clears from all these these paints and everything uh, obscuring it, you do find yourself in the scene, kind of watching from a darker corner of, the, of a laboratory, watching the two of you pour over books. Well, the, the two men, uh, Argo Malcott and this other gentlemen that again you assume to be you pour over these books looking at schematics you can see different mechanical parts lying around uh the beginnings of of what could have been the experiment that created what you are i say as we're getting sucked into the painting hey six i must ask you a question (laughs) (laughs) yeah it looks like i've gained my mustache back all right so I'm going to uh, sneak up behind him. Uh, okay, roll stealth. Archie's just standing there watching. He's super confused as to what this, what he's about to do. It's a twelve. Twelve. All right. Um, okay. So you're you're walking up behind them. Don't turn around. They both turn around. <laughs> And wait. as oh no, uh, as the version of you with the mustache sees you, the whole world goes wibbly wobbly, and you oh, find yourself shit. back. Oh shit! Here we go scene. again. Okay, okay. New new approach. Uh, so I'm in a dark corner. They can't hear me, or they can't see me, right? Uh, it, they're not currently looking at you. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of hide behind something and say. I say, Archie, find out his name. I Presumably my name. I walk up to the not Argo Malcott guy and I smack him on the back of the head and I say, hey, what's your name? (laughs) He grabs the back of his head and both of them whip around. Um... Neither of them seem to be afraid and... Uh... How does... All right, Will. How does... Mustachioed man to react. Oh no! Yeah, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was my thing when we went into my painting. I was like, I really didn't mean for this to happen because now I got to make a lot of decisions really quickly. Said I would give you this option. We could totally abort this. <laughs> no, we're in it, baby. Let's All go. Right. He says you're gonna suffer, Will. My name. <laughs> you want my name? What's your name? I don't 
God. I, 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 I backhand him. Tell me your name. Uh, do I have a chance to dodge it? Um, well, it's, we, not we you. Can... it's not. It's not you. Technically, technically, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not you. But like, old you, like this person <laughs> wouldn't be a pushover. Yeah, go ahead and roll the roll the hit, uh, Archie. We're not gonna. I mean, it's not like lethal damage. You're not actually trying to hurt him. Hurt him. So, I got like a ten. Okay, um, he he can see this one coming and puts his arm up to to block your slap. See, we wouldn't have to do that if you just tell me your name. <laughs> Fuck me, am I right? <laughs> Fuck me. Look it. I thought Tanner was gonna play this guy. Um, no. <laughs> You deserve all of this, Will. You deserve all of this, dude. Okay, all right. My name is Jason. What is yours? Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay. Hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on. Let me do that. Let me record it. My name? <laughs> okay. You sound like such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Six, his name's Jason, and my name's no, Dick no, Kickham. Let's hold go. On, hold on, let me say it one more time. Let me, let me say it one more time. <laughs> my name. <laughs> you don't know my name. <laughs> it's Jason. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> what was the French dude's name in the last fucking... <laughs> I should have I should have played this and just just giving him the hardest <laughs> accent that I could think of just to screw you over even more. Oh. But no, you got this, buddy. No. Go ahead. We're, this Go is ahead, just all. Here. This is all staying in here, man. <laughs> you, if you remove a a second of this, I'm 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 de leveling. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> oh, um, the name's Jason. Now tell me yours. <laughs> What are you, Jason Bourne or something? <laughs> hey, Six! Old you is a real fucking douchebag. Oh, they both look over to where you turned to yell that. <laughs> and the waves happen again, and the scene resets. Wow, I seem very cool. <laughs> oh, you is that what you like call it? Fucking douche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. All right. Only one All right, thing. so am I, am, I, am I to call you Jason or Six now? Are you Jason Six? Six Jason. Mm, you know, I, I, I think I actually right. prefer Six at this point. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the deal. I'll call you, you Jason. Let's like move a on. Douche. I hope that's not yeah. what I'm actually like. Well, the bright side is, is you can be whoever you want to be now. That's very true. Thank you for. You know, I don't know my past life. I'm hoping I turned over a new leaf. <laughs> uh, well, there's only there's only one thing left to do now. And I just start destroying the room as fast as I can. Oh my god. Yeah, all you you destroy you destroy the room and like every time the loop resets when they notice you, you keep destroying things over and over and over again. Um the the real question was okay, so I kind of had an idea of what uh, Archie would get out of a scene like this, if and it, it was it, it was meaningful progression of like trying to release some sort of uh, of, <laughs> of long hurtful yeah, it's ba- it's bullshit, basically, bas- basically shadow work. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, what what exactly like were you did you just want your name out of this what I, what i just wanted i literally six just wanted to know the name uh okay as soon as archie yells back and tells you what the man has said his name is you could feel reality shifting and you are covered in the massive colors again and when your vision clears you are back in the gallery staring at the painting, which is now drained of color altogether. That may not seem like much to you, but it is. I still don't remember much from my previous life, but it it meant a lot to at least know that that's me. I guess that's where I get Jason from. 
Maybe I do remember more than I think. Uh, to be fair, I did start the conversation smacking you in the back of the head, so it could be why you're a little bit pissy. I guess we'll see with time. I have a lot of questions, but for now, they, I guess, will remain unanswered. Maybe we should go find the Great Tower. Um, as you two are discussing next steps, you see Navar walk over to the book and begin flipping through it. And he says, come on, come on. It's got to be in here somewhere. Why didn't I think to look before? And he's just flipping uh, very quickly through all the pages. I look over. What do you think he's doing? I say to Six. I was still talking about the gray tower thing that I think we need to find. And I said, huh, I don't, I don't know. Hey, what are you doing? I'm, I'm trying to find my name. And he's just flipping through. What's your surname? Uh, huh. I think it's, I don't know if I have one. I just was here. I just remember here and this place and being here and looking at the paintings and and that's it. So there's got to be something before this. And he's still just feverishly flipping through the pages. I guess I'm going to try to help him. Okay. You've got to be in there somewhere, buddy. You walk over to the book. And again, this book isn't any sort of alphabetical order or any sort of order that you can tell. And as you're swiping through all of the pages, eventually you see it. And it's not in the same color lettering as everything else. It is in this bold black font. And it seems that there is a surname there, but it is smudged out. This, this, this actually looks to be like a, a very hurriedly handwritten piece from a, an, uh, a quill that was dipped in too much ink. Well, that's interesting. Let's, I guess, pull you up, uh, say, say Navarre, and point to his name, I guess. As you think it, the gallery begins to shift. And like before, the paintings begin to uh, flutter, the sound of, of paper running past each other um, begins to pick up. But the sound of it keeps growing louder and louder and the paintings keep flipping by and all of these things start to shake on the wall, all the many picture frames. And you can feel the ground begin to shake as well. And Navar grabs onto the podium that the book is sitting on and these paintings are not settling as, uh, Debris begins falling from the ceiling. Uh, not, not enough to hurt or maim yet, but uh, the, the ground do be shaken. What do you do, Six? I told you not to touch things you didn't understand. I mean, I don't understand much, to be honest. Um, we, well, then you shouldn't uh, touch much. It looks like this place is crumbling. Navarre, I think we need to leave. I can't leave until... Where did I come from? I've just been here. And he looks incredibly distraught, this 10-year-old boy who is not old enough to curse. I uh, look for my own name in the book while the stuff is crumbling. You look back down at the book and all the names are gone. Oh... Well, I thought maybe if I switched it off of you, this would stop, but I think we need to leave. I don't think you're going to find anything out today. And I start heading to, running towards the door. Navar runs in the opposite direction towards one of the picture frames and tries to take it off the wall. Oh, I don't know about this. I'm running faster away from whatever okay. he's doing. Archie? Is the, so does, is the, the degradation of where we are just getting like worse and worse? Yeah, it's it's not like exponentially, but it is getting uh, worse as time goes on. Um, enough to be concerning. Concerning. I think we should leave, Archie. Well, yeah, I think you're right. 
Okay. Uh, sorry, bruv. Who's going? Nice meeting you, Navarro. Remember, don't cuss or do drugs until you're 11. I'm out of here. See ya. <laughs> okay. The two of you uh, begin running towards the way that you came in. And as you get to the threshold, I need you to make a dexterity save. Can I see it? Can you see whatever is making me do a dexterity save? You're, you're diving out of the way of collapsing. Uh, yeah, okay. Collapsing so the answer is yes. You get the advantage. Oh. 13 plus zero. <clears throat> uh, Non-natural 20. Okay. As the two of you dive forward, Archie, you're able to tuck yourself in uh, with your <laughs> pick, pick your coattails up as you roll and tumble down the stairs, trying to minimize the damage to your suit jacket. Six, you are caught by the arches out in the front of the building that are holding up the front. Uh, it tumbles and hits you in the back for eight damage. Rough. Okay. Um, you collapse and you roll down the stairs, uh, eventually splashing down at the bottom into the drift. Um, not so much as to where you're, you're like in the drift. You can still walk on top of it. Both of you can. Um, and then behind you, the gallery crumbles in upon itself. And this hole appears. This almost black hole that's sparkling on the outside that swallows itself inward. Everything that's there and all of the water from the drift realm is sort of pulling and undulating towards it. Not flowing into it, but just there with this dark open portal. We know it's a portal. Do we know where it goes? Probably. You Do we know anything no about it? Be honest. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Roll. roll out. You can roll Arcana if you'd like. No. To, no. Well, I, I don't know. Anything. I got yeah, some yeah. Arcana. Let's see what happens. I mean, seventeen plus two. That's a nineteen. So uh, whatever. I guess we'll find out what we can know about it. That's a portal. Cool. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's definitely a portal. <laughs> I'm glad you know because I don't. Um, I mean, best best you could think of, like you you search back in your memory banks and you know of like black holes and things being swallowed upon each other and think, oh, well, if a bunch of mass is taken in there, it has to have gone somewhere because uh, laws of universal physics, physics, I think it's a law of physics that mass, matter cannot mass be, cannot, mass cannot be. matter, it's uh, cannot be created or destroyed, only altered. Yeah, that's Something it's actually like the law. It had to go somewhere. To any, to any, to any physicist out there, it's actually uh, that's the law of conservation of energy. Newton's, energy Newton's cannot, second law. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's the second, first, or whatever. All right, I'm going to look around and see if there's anything else besides this thing. All right, I'm going to walk around it. <laughs> oh yeah, you walk around it. You can feel the pull of it, um, but it's not like actually pulling you in. But all around you in this place is just. Uh, the waves of, of the drift and the souls beneath it and this black portal. All right, Six. I'm going to do something really stupid. Wait. I think we should do it together because I have an idea of what you're thinking. We dive into the portal? All right, let's do it. All right, let's run stride for stride. I'm, I'm going to keep pace with the uh, old boy here. We're going to jump into the portal. All right, the two of you break towards the portal and dive in and you are taken back into the same sort of blackness that you found when you came in here and as soon as your vision clears you find yourselves in the gallery of a courtroom in port i'm just kidding. <laughs> you bastard <laughs> you bastard <laughs> um no you uh the two of you find yourself sort of um drifting uh, drifting in this place again, this sort of feeling of nothingness and, and forgetting everything. Uh, and you can kind of begin to feel at ease in the nothingness here, this sort of comfort of not knowing your own troubles. As your troubles are washed away, you forget every bad memory, recent or old, everything that's ever transpired in your life even the good times but in this moment you really only feel still and if this moment could go on forever that might be okay 
it would never be bad. It would never be good. But you could just be here. And what I need to know is what in the back of your mind, what small bit could kind of either push you forward or keep you here? Do you want to stay? Archie hears in his head three more names. Six just remembers what Argo said and says out loud, Can tell he. Okay. So the two of you have feelings of seeking. Seeking people. Finding reason to push forward. Something to find out more about yourself or end the long suffering and avenge those you care for. And as you attach to these things, you can feel all the feelings flood back instantaneously. It is almost overwhelming, the emotions that you feel in this moment. Anger, aggression, happiness, sadness, longing, want, everything all at once. And these things propel you forward through this darkness. You can feel it rippling all around you. And then you can find yourself facing a light in front of you. And at breakneck speed, you are barreling towards it. And you both finally feel each other's presence. And as you look towards each other and look back at the light, the darkness dissipates. And in front of you, you see this monstrous, undulating wave of darkness. And this thing screeches as it realizes you're in front of it. Once again, it is the giant thing that touched you, the waves of blackness that brought you into Drift Realm. Beside you, you can see the goblin who uh, you pushed out earlier, Archie, pushed out of the way of this thing. And you can see the Black Hole Collective Group, Onyx Company, looking on in fear of this, this incomprehensible being. And this awful screeching rings out across the land as it, form seems to begin to turn and move back towards the east from whence it came. Uh, I look to I look at Archie and say, hmm. Is uh is that drugs? It's bleeding fucking close. <laughs>